Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Also, good morning. So yesterday I didn't make a video. I was really tired and I just didn't necessarily accomplish too much. Uh, so today I want to go ahead and summarize pretty much what we did yesterday and actually I guess the past two days. Anyway, you get what I mean. All right, so huge upgrades and huge progress. So let's go ahead and get into it. Before I talk about anything, I'm just going to go ahead and showcase a quick map. My now, do note gone. that uh, my clear has went down a little bit because I wanted to push to being more tanky. I wanted to really, you know, go all out here on the league mechanic. So uh, we have kind of created a monster in terms of survivability. And I'm going to just go ahead and show you that. So the, the biggest hit to my clear, I would say, is I dropped my onslaught, which I could get back. I could just drop a flask and get that back, right? But that's not really what I was aiming for right now. I also get a lot of damage when my Awakened Gems level up here, so I have basically like Awakened Deli Focus, almost 5, and same thing with my Burning, um, so that is going to help massively. And then of course, if you really want to chase some good clear on Righteous Fire and you don't want to go explode, you can always save for the giga expensive flask, which is already at its end, but that's for another time. So you'll notice my character's life actually went down substantially from previous videos, but if you, if you look, you'll notice my health doesn't really move. I mean, I guess that's Executioner. That doesn't count. That's Arc Nemesis, by the way. Totally got removed, you know? Uh, so anyway, the, the new setup I'm doing is essentially uh, kind of what we were theory crafting on League Star. Captain Lance talked about it a lot, and that is the Divine Flesh variant. So essentially what the Divine Flesh variant is, is you want to switch your Brutal Restraint to a Glorious Vanity. You're going to be putting that right over here. Um, to basically get Divine Flesh. Now, I'll talk more about this in a little bit. But essentially, it's going to even out your res, making it so your Chaos is probably going to be the highest, unless you're going really expensive on your gear. And the purpose of this is to basically split damage. Um, so half hits your Elemental and half hits your Chaos. So that way you get way more out of your Unbreakable, which is currently being investigated. We'll talk about it another time. And then you want to make sure to pair it with the Mastery for 10% of armor also applies to Chaos taken from hits. Now, this character can still get massive spikes of, of uh, survivability uh, via conversion. So, for example, my body armor is still a pile of shit from the other day. Uh, what I mean by that is, if I had, like, the Gravicious Fizz's Fire prefix on this, I would take far less physical. Um, same thing with my helmet. Um, if I had, like, physical damage reduction, it would go a long way as well. So there's, a uh, essentially, as you get into more defensive layers in PoE, you kind of become, like, zero HP, right? You start to remove HP, and you spec a lot more into mitigation. And I would say one of the weakest things right now that I am to is just crit. Because crit, you know, multiplies the damage. If the damage is going up by a ton, my armor has less effect on the mitigation. But that will be one of the next things is, uh requiring some forms of uh, critical strike damage reduction. All right, so here is indeed the league mechanic. We're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to hit it up. Let's see what we can do here. It's going to pick a random shield. I do have a shrine, but uh, that would be cheating. So we're going to just turn that off. So we don't we don't do that. Okay. So I'm just going to come over here and identify this shield. Actually, let's do this one because this one's lower, lower int requirement. And we're just going to charge away. Oh, yeah. All the way. All the, Keep going. All the way. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go. Do this yet. Now, there is always a chance that I will die, right? However, we have honestly kind of tanked the world on this character so far. So you still will notice that I take damage. I also keep forgetting to use my flammability because I've been playing with my friend who is a curse bot. Kind of funny. My mana is gone. But this character is definitely able to tank uh, max tier Crucible right now, which honestly makes the League mechanic a lot more fun because I can kind of just go back to, you know, just kind of doing whatever. Oh, it pooped out of Beyond Mob. Oh, wait, it's an Apparition, too? You don't get anything for killing the Apparition, do you? I don't think so. Oh, I don't think so. Look at the damage mods on this map. Oh, wow, it's actually got that new map mod I didn't even notice. Extra Chaos. Well, good thing that doesn't actually do anything to us, so... No problem! Another reason that, uh, the setup is very strong.
All right, that's pretty much primarily clear. I'll go do the harvest on stream. You don't need to see me do it. It's nothing fancy. Okay, so let's talk about the character now, right? What has changed? So if you are following the POB, and you take the POB and you go all the way down to the 96 plus version, and you don't have to necessarily be 96 plus. It's just more of a, you know, a breakdown of progression. Uh, this is kind of the variant I'm in right now. My damage is still far off of the POB, but the survivability is creeping up there. So, um, one of the main things that I did, I have dropped this section right here in favor of more survivability. Now, this is tricky. It's tricky because, number one, you get a lot of res right over here, right? On top of the res on the two baby nodes, you also get all of the aura nodes over here. What's important about this is you're scaling armor via aura effect for determination. So, when you remove this... Um, you got to be wary of your armor value, right? So what, what I did is on this glorious vanity, you have to make sure it's Zabiqua for Divine Flesh, because I wanted at least one node that gave me armor. So I could get a little bit of armor back because it's a very efficient node in my opinion, right? So I'm currently getting like armor here with physical damage reduction. I'm also getting max life regen and max chaos res with chaos res. I don't actually know if I want this. I feel like armor would be better, but this is what I landed with. I also changed the pathing from here to here, and that is solely because this gives me increased effect of non-curse auras, and this gives me lightning res. I would consider those two points superior to strength and 10% alley damage, right? So that's why I have that. Um, now, the Brutal Restraint version is totally fine, and remember, you cannot use two Timeless Jewels. The Brutal Restraint version is so much easier to set up. This is a pain in the ass because it corrupts every single thing here. Like, if you look, these are all corrupted. So trying to find one that is good for you can be very, very annoying. But when you set it up, it's insane. Furthermore, the next thing we did is you want to come over here, which helps you get some of the armor back, which is nice. On Faith and Steel, you also get some res back. And it is mandatory with the Divine Flesh setup to take the 10% of armor. Also applies to Chaos Taken from Hits. So again, a quick, a quick understanding. Divine Flesh makes it so 50% of our elemental, including fire, is taken as Chaos. So a mob hits us with fire. 50% of that fire goes to chaos. Why is that good? Because unbreakable is now rolling on 50% of your elemental damage. Armor, unlike resistance, fluctuates with the hit. The bigger the hit, the less effect your armor has. So minute like having that hit essentially makes your armor much stronger. Then the 50% that goes to chaos is also being mitigated by a stronger form of unbreakable. This is important because this not only is applying to spell damage, but attacks. So when you roll map mods with bonus Ellie, bonus Fizz, or sorry, bonus Cold, bonus Chaos, you encounter an Arc Nemesis pack with bonus Cold, uh, bonus Chaos, all of this stuff is getting mitigated by your armor now as well. Um, so that's where that really picks in, and that or kicks up. And then you can actually start scaling armor as well. That is why I'm running a Basalt Flask instead of the Onslaught, because I'm trying to tank the world. Now, in this instance, uh, I also had some extra points, so what I did is I dropped out of Acrimony, which did lose me some damage, right? But I do pick up half of that damage back at Arsonist. So Arsonist is basically 14% fire multi for three points, whereas this is, uh, I, I can't do the math right now, 27%. It is a lot of multi, but it's a lot more points, right? Um, but again, I, I needed to drop some, some points. So this is what I actually ended up removing. I kind of want to get it back, but not sure yet. The only reason I still have this right here is because of intelligence requirements. Um, I'm thinking of dropping this whole section in favor of another cluster jewel. The thing about cluster jewels is you want jewels to make use of your cluster jewels, right? This cluster jewel here is a prismatic heart burning bright um, with widespread destruction, pretty expensive. Uh, it was like three divines. It's not really that good by itself. The reason it's good is it enables two jewel slots and it gives me 10 Ellie res. So, for example, in this, which brings me up to the next part, we did another transition. Uh, you'll notice I'm not running Tempest Shield anymore. The purpose of not running Tempest Shield is the interaction with Storm Shroud. So, this again is in the POB. It's in one of the later pivots. So, by crafting on a belt, so on a Stygian Vice, you can actually craft with a Void Shock Essence. By getting a Void Shock Essence, you can see here I have a 54% chance to avoid being shocked. Uh, with my jewel, combo that with 47% chance to avoid being shocked. And now all of a sudden on our defensive tab, we have 101 chance to avoid everything, right? You don't ever watch 101 Domalations, by the way. I love that as a kid. 
Anyway, so yeah, now we are immune to... Essentially, we cannot be affected by Ignite, Chill, Freeze, or Shock. I don't know if it affects Brittle Sap and Scorch. It says Elemental, right? Oh, it does actually say it down there. Yeah, so we're, we're good against Brittle Sap and Scorch. This means you're even better against things like Wave 30 Simulacrum. You just want to put more into your damage, right? Now, a quick fix I have done because my Chaos Res on my gear was not up to par, and I wanted to make sure I was at Chaos Cap with Divine Flesh, is I actually snagged myself a Born of Chaos Cluster Jewel. Now, this is a small Cluster Jewel, and essentially, this little baby note is giving me Int, Chaos Res, and Life. I needed the Int because I dropped the Int at Acrimony, so this saves me a skill point. Um, slash, I still have to fix my gear anyway. And Born of Chaos gives three max Chaos Res, which is actually good when you take into the fact that 50% of your Ellie is going against your Chaos, right? Not to mention, there is one other nice advantage to this setup. When you are pushing your Void Stones, not that you will have this, because I, I I did all of my Void Stones before I actually had this setup. I think we still only have one death from that the stream highlights, if you guys saw. Um, this will make you so much more tanky against the boss attacks, because... For example, a Shaper Ball hits you, 50% of it goes to Chaos. Shaper Ball has Cold Pen. The part that hits your Chaos cannot be affected by the pen because it doesn't have Chaos Pen. So penetration is one of the biggest multipliers in PoE when you are taking damage. Okay, so that's a that's another part explained, right? Um, on the Stygian Vice, I went with an Elder Influence and I was basically spamming to try to get... Honestly, I was trying to get Life Regen and a good Life Roll. If you get Life Recovery, or Max Life, that's a bonus. I ended up getting double T1 life. I crafted armor and evasion. Um, I had a really shitty life regen roll. I exalted fire res, which in the patch is actually technically life regen. Could get a way better belt, but it was enough to get me set up on the transition. Uh, in my jewel just has armor, avoid being shocked, damage over time. That's it. I would like to have life there too, but this is what we ended up with. Okay, um, next up, Storm Shroud. Talking about it more. The other purpose of Storm Shroud is you drop Tempest Shield. What is the benefit of dropping Tempest Shield? Well, there's a few options. Uh, number one, you could drop Reservation on your tree. So maybe you can drop this. I'm not sure. The reason I didn't care to focus on this is I need that intelligence that's right there. So instead, I go with what's in the POB, which is crafting Aspect of Spider. Now, Spider, I think, is on the shield. So just update the POB. I have changed it to be on an amulet. Um, it doesn't really matter. You just don't want to link it with Life Tap. I don't actually even know if that works, but I had a comment on it. So I just removed it. Aspect of Spider is another form of damage multiplier, which makes monsters take increased damage, and you don't have to press a button. You just toggle on the aura, and you're good to go. It's also another defensive layer when you're doing, like, pinnacle bossing, uh, because you get chill from your Skitterbot, and then you get slow from Spider. Pretty, pretty cool. Okay, some other gone. things to talk about. Um, I still do not have a level 21 Fire Trap. It's actually level 20. I still need to get a new amulet. Uh, when dropping this whole bottom side on the tree, I did have to allocate Charisma to be able to fit in the current auras that I have. Um, so that is one other thing to take note of. Um, other than that, I think the only thing I want to talk about is I did do a massive respec on my Atlas. I do not recommend it, and the Atlas command is up to date in my Twitch stream. If you want to look at it, I don't want to link it down here. Um, the purpose of this Atlas is one big word. Fun. So what I mean by fun is... Uh, Grand Design, which is essentially what I am built around right now, has a nice bonus where your maps have 1% increased pack size per allocated notable on the Atlas Passive Tree. So if you look at this map, it's an Alk and Go setup, and I have 60% pack size. Pair that with Delirium, pair that with some Sextants, and everything kind of goes crazy, right? Um, so that's, that's kind of where I go. Um, I really like this setup for leveling, personally. It's a lot of fun. Mobs just fly at your face, right? So that's pretty much about it. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. If you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, you can catch me streaming live every day, but Sundays at twitch.tv slash box. See you guys all tomorrow.